Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Now, a couple of days ago, I did a YouTube Live and I made this shirt. And then at the end of the video, I gave it away. Well, that night, I really just showed you how to put this together. I didn't show you how to make the design. So in tonight's video, I'm gonna show you how I used Silhouette Business Edition to make this rhinestone template. Now, these rhinestones are beautiful. These are Sapphire AB. They are a beautiful, rich blue. The AB coating means they have an iridescent sheen over the top of them, and they're gorgeous. Now, these rhinestones were part of a treasure trove collection that I got from the Baby's Booty. She does a rhinestone buy-in almost every month, and this is called the Treasure Trove AB Collection. So if you want to see how I made this design, keep watching the video. Now, I will forewarn you, it's pretty tedious. So if you're truly not interested in learning how to make a rhinestone template, you probably don't want to watch it. But if you do want to learn how to do this, I think there's a lot of good information in it from start to finish. Okay, so I'm going to open my Silhouette Studio software and I use the Business Edition. The Business Edition lets you make your rhinestone designs and then it also lets you save them as SVGs. Since I don't use a Silhouette machine, I need the Business Edition to be able to save those as SVGs. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this text tool, click on it once, click over on the canvas, and in all caps, I'm going to type the word bling. Then I'll click off of it, back on it, and then I can go right up here and change my font. And I want a chunkier font, and I want a real squared off font, so I'm going with Arial Black. Okay, so I want the word bling to be about eight and a half or nine inches wide. So I'm just going to drag that till it's somewhere in between there. And notice the line goes a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. And so there is some extra room in there. Notice also there's extra room up top and extra room down on the bottom. And a couple people told me how to fix that, and I can't remember exactly what I do. I'll have to go back and look at that video to see that. So for now, I'm just going to use a workaround. I'm just going to use these little squares to determine how tall it is. So right now, it's less than two squares tall. I want it to be about four squares tall, maybe five squares tall. I'll go ahead and start with four. So that means the actual letters are about four inches tall. Okay, so here's what I like to do next. I like to go ahead and go up to Object, Ungroup, and look here, it hugs in on them, and you see the actual height is 4.2 by 8.374. So I'm gonna take it just a tiny bit wider, and then we'll start putting the rhinestones in. Now I just get it close to the size that I want it, because once you add rhinestones, and you might move letters around a little bit, space them out some, bring them together some, your width and your height is going to change a little bit. So I don't really get too concerned as long as it's about the size that I want it. Okay, so I go over here to the rhinestone panel and click on that, and I have three options. I can have rhinestones around the perimeter, a linear fill, or a radial fill. Now you can actually mix those. Let me show you. Most of the letters look really good with the linear fill. But if you wanted to try the radial fill on just the G, you could do that. Now the other thing is, the spacing on mine defaults to point .039, and I want my bling closer together. So I'm going to select all the letters, and I'm going to take this down to point .03. Okay, so they got closer together, and most of the letters look really good. So I'm going to work on each letter individually, so I click off, Let's click back on, and I want to see if I drag this wider, if this gap right here fills in. Or actually, let me drag it narrower. Okay, I don't like that, so we're going to go wider. And you can just slowly move this until it looks like you like it. Okay, that's, that's okay, but I would have to do quite a bit of work. Let me go over here to the linear field and see how that looks. And I'm actually happy with that. I know up here it looks nice when it's rounded, but all these gaps. 
I'm going to go ahead and change it back to linear fill. All right, I'm going to blow this up. So I hit command and the plus sign. That way I can really start working with my bling. Then the other thing is I want to change it a color so I can see it better and see how it would look when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and use purple. And then I want to play with some of these letters. For example, see the eye and how far apart the rows are? Let's blow it up some more. I don't like how far apart they are. So I'm going to click on my eye and then I'm going to have to go back over here to the rhinestone tool and say release rhinestones. What that's going to do is make each little individual square or each individual little circle its own, I don't know, its own object. And so I'm going to take all the little circles on this right side, highlight them, and then I'm going to use my left arrow key and start moving those over. Okay, I like that better. Then, because it's easier to grab two rows than to grab just this second row here, I'm going to go over here. Okay, let me get where I need to be. I'll go over here and select these two rows, and then I'm going to move those over to the right. And then I can go back and grab just that far left row and move it to the right. Now I have the same issue with the top part of this cell and you may not want to do all this work. You may be happy with it. If you're going to sell your templates, I think it's worth taking the extra time to really make them as nice as you can. Okay, so I've highlighted all of the eyes. So I'm going to go back up to object and group so that those will be one image again. Now I'm going to go to the L and say release rhinestones. And I'm just going to select the rhinestones up on the top part of the L. I've selected the right three columns. I'll move those over a little bit. Then I'll take the two right columns, move those over a little bit, and then lastly, the very right column and move it. Now another thing, I don't like how tall this bottom part of the L is. So I'm going to select two rows of that and hit the delete key and I like that better. Now what I notice is down here is off from up here and I'm not sure if I did that. Oh no, okay, that's because I deleted these rows so those are just spaced a little differently. Now that spacing is good so here's what I'm going to do and I know I'm doing extra work. I'm going to go for these top rows again and move those over these two rows right here. So when you're doing this, you're just going to play around with your design. And you're going to work on it until you're happy with it. Again, even if you don't do all this, your shirt's probably going to look great. All right, so let's go ahead and select all of the rhinestones here. Go to Object and Group. And even though you might not want to do all this extra work, I do want to show you just in case you do. All right, so I'm going to pick the B and say release rhinestones. And the things I don't like in this is this area here and this area here. They're so far apart. So I'm going to select each individual rhinestone. Now what I need to do is I select one, then I hit the shift key. And I start selecting the rest that I want to select. So I'm going to get those, and then I'm going to jump down here and get those. And then I'm going to use my left arrow key and just move those over. Now I can see I left a couple of them behind down below, so I'll have to go back and fix that. See right here, that one I missed. So I'll hit shift and grab this other one I missed and move those over. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the rest of these. I'll fast forward through this, but you can still see what I'm doing. And I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, so the last thing is this little dot here looks a little out of place. Let's go ahead and just highlight it and delete it. And I want to move the rhinestones in this row just a little bit. And I'm done. So I'm going to pick all the stones in the B, go back up to Object, and Group. Now, was it worth all that work? It didn't take me very long, just a few minutes. And to me, it's worth it. But if it's not worth it to you, skip it and just go ahead and cut your template the way it was. So over here on the G, I'm going to do something similar. So I'll select it and say, Release Rhinestones. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me is I notice I only have two stones here. So I could either add a couple more stones or let's just delete those. Now, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to pick the row above it, hit Command-C for Copy, Command-V for Paste, and then I'll just drag that right up here and put it right under the row above it. Okay, I think I like that a little bit better, but it needs to go up just slightly, so I can use my up arrow to move it up just a small amount. Then I'm going to take these three rows, we'll move those over to the right just a little bit. Now I want to kind of keep this curve, so now I'm just going to take, well, I don't want to take that. I'm going to take just these top two rows, move those over a little bit. That way I kind of keep that curve going on. All right, let's go a little bit more. And then lastly, these three stones right here, and move those over. Okay, I want to show you something. Hope I don't like how this line is so straight. So see this stone right here? I'm going to grab it, move it to the left. And then instead of hand placing the rest of this row, I'm going to try to select all the rhinestones in that row. So I'm going to run my cursor through it. Then I'm going to go up and go to Object, Align, and then let's see. I want to come down to Space Horizontally, and when I do that, it's going to space those out equally. So here we go. Okay, so you saw those move, hopefully. That's a little change, but I like it. I'm going to do it again. Move it over a little bit more. Run my cursor through it again. Object, align, whoops, align, and space horizontally. And I'm going to stick with that. Now I think this bottom row could use a few more rhinestones. So let's just select these three, hit Command C for copy, Command V for paste. I'll set, whoops, I'll move this row up to here. I'm going to move this guy over to where I think he should go. And let's just put him here. And then let's move these two to about right here. Okay, so as long as I just grab all of those rhinestones in that row, go back up to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally, they're going to space out. And that's probably one too many. Let's get rid of this one. Move him over just a little bit. This time I'm going to do two things because I don't think they're even. So I'm going to say align and I'm going to align their centers and I'll say align them in the middle. Okay, so they adjusted some. Then I'll go back to Object, Align, and once again, Space Horizontally. And of course, I want to add one or two more rhinestones up here. Let's see, how many do I have on the bottom? Five. Let's go ahead and end with five up here. So I'm going to hit Command-C for Copy, Command-V for Paste. Add one more. Let's go ahead and select all of those. Go up to Object, Align, 
Let's align them in the middle first because that last one may not have been aligned. And then go back up to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally. Now I'm just going to use my left arrow key and move them over. Okay, so let's see how this looks from a distance because when it is zoomed really, really close onto them, you might see little things, but when you're further away or when they're all together, they're going to look great. Of course, this N is giving me fits. So I'll work with it just a minute. Okay, so I have an idea, and the first idea is to add one more stone to this row. So first thing I have to do is pick the end, say release rhinestones. And then I'm going to select one rhinestone on that row. Well, I have to click off of it. Select one on that row. Let's just move this guy over so that he's aligned up with his column. Let's copy him. So Command C, Command B for paste. And then I'm just going to move this up using my arrow keys. And then move them over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pick these four stones, go up to Object, Align, let's center them in the middle, and then let's go back to Object, Align, and Space Horizontally. Now I want to do the same thing over here, adding a little bit more to this side, so I'm going to move that stone over. And the reason I didn't pick the whole row is because this one right here is kind of in line with this kind of vertical row, so I didn't want to mess with it. So I have one selected, and I'll do Command C for copy, Command V for paste, move it up. Whoops, went too far. Okay, so I'm going to select this row, just ending right here. Object, Align, Middles, then Object, Align, Space Horizontally. Then one more row and I think we're done. Let's move. And I am done. And I really hope that that was worth my work. I do think it was. I think that looks so much better. Okay, so the crazy side of me saw something I didn't like, and that's this one right here. So I'm going to go to the G, I'm going to delete that, and then I'm going to move this one over to the left just a little bit. I'm going to move this one. See how this one's further out? Let's just soften that difference, move it a little bit to the right. It doesn't have to be all the way over the one below it, but I just want to soften that. So now I'm going to select this row. They're already even, so let's go to Object, Align, and space them horizontally. And of course, because I'm me, I'm going to play with these just a little bit. I just can't let things go sometimes. So what I want to do is go ahead and group all the stones in my G back together. So I'll select those, hit Object, and Group. And I'm not sure I grouped all the rest of my letters back together, so let me check those. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the entire word, and I'm going to say Object and Group. Okay, so look right here. This is a wonderful feature. It tells you how many stones you need. So this word bling right now needs 998 SS10 rhinestones. Okay, so the other word in this is the word squad. And I want to go ahead and copy and paste an extra word bling because I'm getting ready to ruin it. <laughs> if I ever want to reuse it without the word squad in it, I'm getting ready to mess it up. So I'm going to move this bling down and I'll change the color of it just so it'll come into any program I might use as a separate layer or a different color. Okay, so now I'm going to add the word squad. So I'll click on the text tool, and then in all lowercase, I'm going to type the word squad. Click off of it, click back on it. And then I'm going to go up, and I'm hoping to use the font homework, which is right here. 
and then I'll make it bigger. I'm just going to drag it again and I'm going to look at it relative to this. I'm not even going to worry about the dimensions. I'm just going to drag it till it looks like the way I want it to look. Okay, now notice all these cut lines in between, so you have to do something to fix that. I'm going to go up to Object and Ungroup first, and then I'm going to move some of my letters closer together. Now once I have everything where I want it, I'm going to go up here, select everything. I'm going to change it to color first just to make sure it looks good. And I like the looks of that. So I'm going to go up to Panels, Modify, and I'm going to say Weld. And there's probably a shortcut for that. I'm not that great yet at this program, so I just have to do it the slow way. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and center Squad up on Bling. So Squad is selected. I'll add Bling to it. And then I'll go up to Object, Align, and align the center. Now, I may not stay exactly with that, but that helps me get a starting point. I do want to move this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to blow up the screen some so that I can see which rhinestones it's touching. I'm going to be pretty strategic about where this is placed. So I want to move it up and over, right there. Then, with Squad selected, I'm going to hover over these to see which one I want. Send to back, that's what I want. Now I can see which rhinestones I need to get rid of. I'm going to have to ungroup. Then I'm going to have to ungroup the G. So I didn't need to group it, that was another mistake, but I'm learning. So ungroup. Now I'm going to go ahead and touch every circle that that runs through and delete those. Then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this circle, move it a little bit to the left. I'll make a copy of it and I'm going to try to fit the copy in right here. Okay, let's move this one over a little bit. And then I can move this one a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and grab both of those and go up to Align and Align Centers. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Align and Align the Middle. I'm going to move both of them up just a tiny bit. Now, would it look good to have a... No, I shouldn't have a row here. It's going to be off. Should I have one here? Let's see what that would look like. I think I like having one there. So that's what I'll do. Move it over just a little bit. And then I don't like this so far away. So I'm going to grab this one, move it left. Then I'll go through this entire row. And I'll say Object, Align, and Space Horizontally. I'll move this one a little bit closer to the loop of that letter and do the same thing here. And then I think we'll be done. Okay, so let's make this smaller and look at it. Okay, so that's what we're going to go with. So I just need to go back and group everything. So I'll move this out of the way. Now this is how I leave mine. Some people go ahead and weld those together because it does go into Cricut more quickly. I go ahead and leave them just grouped together in case I want to make any adjustments in Cricut. Now because things don't always go into Cricut the right size, I'm going to go ahead and select everything and I can see it's 9.318 inches wide and 6.875 tall. So now I'm going to save it and I'm going to say save as and I'm going to save it to my hard drive.
and I'm saving it with the size in it. You can see that right here. And that was a suggestion of the baby's booty. And it is paid off so many times to have the size in your design. That way, when you get it into Cricut, if it doesn't come in at that size, you can resize it to that size and these holes will be the correct size. So I'm going to say OK and we're done. Now that we're done with the design, I want to show you how it looks when it comes into Cricut. Because there's usually sizing issues when you bring something into Cricut that was designed elsewhere. So I'm going to say Upload, Upload Image, then I'm going to go find it on my desktop, and in the end, I ended up welding it together because I couldn't get it to come into Cricut. I changed the name, and here's what it's called now. But notice I still kept the dimensions in it. So let's go ahead and say open. And upload. And that was real time. It was very quick. So I'll select this image or this design and say add to canvas. And again, it came in very, very quickly. Now notice it came in at over 12 inches wide, and it was supposed to be 9.316. So with the proportions locked, or with that lock on, I'm going to go ahead and change the width to 9.316. Now when I hit the Enter key, the height should change to approximately 6.875. So let's see if it does. Okay, so it came in at 6.871. This third decimal way over here, off a little bit, that is not a big deal. It'll still work fine. So if I were going to cut this now, first thing I do is I'd ungroup it. And then this squad, I used HTV. So I'd go up here and I'd say flip horizontal and I'm ready to cut. Now if you don't flip it horizontally here, then on your cut screen, just remember to click mirror. So if you've made it this far, I can tell you really want to learn how to make templates. If you have questions, concerns, reach out to me. I'd be glad to help if I can. I'm not an expert, but I have been working on them for a while now. Thanks again for watching the video, and until my next one, bye-bye.